Come on, come on, come on. Oh, GG, my team. I, I always do this. This always happens to me. 7 0. Oh, my team can't do anything. Ah, GG. I'm just gonna go to Victoria's Gaming and, and cry about it on the on the chat. <sighs> Noobs. What is up, guys? It is your LOL support here, and today, instead of bringing you guys a regular old champion guide, we're gonna be bringing you guys a guide on how to carry your team once you are ahead. Now, this gameplay that's rolling in the background, this gameplay is just gonna be kind of rolling. Uh, something for you guys to watch just for fun if you guys want. Um, I originally had a Jace video that I was going to use for this where I was 14, 3, and 6 and my team had a total of I think 22 kills. So that video is kind of the example I wanted you guys to watch. However, again, low replay, just pooping on my dreams. So I uh, was not able to use that. So I'm just going to be using this Shivana clip that I got yesterday. Uh, apparently recent games on low replay do end up playing. So you guys can watch this, uh, have fun watching it, and just enjoy the guide, sit back, relax, and listen to my voice. So, I want to go into some common misnomers of what people think carrying is. So as you guys saw in that little uh, little skit before this video, um, carrying does not necessarily mean that you are um, building all the damage in the world and that you're just going to one-shot everybody, and that's going to be that. I mean, that's sometimes the situation, like with Jace, I'm probably going to be building more damage based than other champions that I play top lane. Uh, Renekton is a champion that if I dominate top, I'm not going to build a lot of damage. You know, because if my base stats are good enough to where I can kill my enemy laner, then I don't really need the damage necessarily. I can start itemizing for the rest of the map. That's what a lot of people don't do, is some people just itemize according to their lane, rather than itemizing according to the map. Um, because when you itemize to your lane and you're already ahead, what use are you doing, you know? All you're doing is you're propelling yourself into a better position into your lane, but you're already in a great position anyways. So once you're ahead of your lane and once you can maintain that lead, why not start building uh, in preparation of fighting the enemy team, you know? So, like, on a Renekton, um, I usually like to build Bork, okay? Now, you guys can debate with me, you guys be like, oh, Tiamat's better, um, or uh, Hydra's better. I like Bork. Um, both Tiamat and Bork both have a base uh, item and then a random item. Uh, for Bork, it's the Cutlass. For uh, Hydra, it's the Tiamat. I just feel like the... The animation cancel is nice from Tiamat and Hydra, however the Bork is going to help me out as a laner and also as a, it synergizes better with my passive on the Bork does, because a completed Bork gives you more uh, attack speed and every auto attack on a minion or a champion is going to give you fury uh, based on which one you auto attack, I think it's uh, 5 and 10 uh, respectively. But, um, yeah, that's, you guys can check the Renekton guide for that one. But I like to build a uh, Cutlass most of the times because it helps with dueling as well in lane. But then I just like overall just the, uh, the Baron control that it gives me too. Because another thing, uh, segueing from that, another thing you guys need to do as a top laner that is carrying, quote unquote carrying, um, another thing that you guys need to do is you guys need to ward. Um, I don't see a lot of people warding. So as a top laner, if you're ahead, say you get first blood, right? And you base, you buy your items. Um, I believe I'm, a, I'm about to pick up a kill on this middle pretty soon. So I go back and I buy a, I buy a brutalizer. Um, and say after you buy that brutalizer, you're left with uh, like a hundred. 120, 135 gold. If you're ahead, go ahead and buy a pink ward and save your mid laner from getting ganked and save you from getting ganked as well. And a lot of people don't know this ward spot. I don't know why, but it's right here in this bush behind red buff. If you simply pink ward that bush right there, it grants you vision of this path coming to top lane. It also grants you this path coming to mid lane. 
So two of the most popular gank routes uh, for enemy junglers to run through for top and uh, mid in the top side can get be can be covered by one ward. So and especially since it's a pink ward, that ward can effectively be there for the whole game, and you will have denied the jungle of any pressure top side uh, whenever she ganks. And whenever she crosses over that ward, that laner will know, hey, she's there. And we'll waste so much of the jungler's time. That's an example of carrying the game from top lane. I'm not building damage. I'm not just, like, going straight for kills, you know? I'm I'm granting my team a easier time, not only in lane, but also in fighting phases as well. I'm granting them an easier time for when, I, uh, for when I'm only in top. So it's like, mid laner, as a mid laner who's fed, you can kind of carry from getting kills because you can roam uh, more effectively. As a top laner, it's harder to roam, you know, because if you don't roam at the right times, then you're just going to end up losing XP, you're going to be losing minion gold, and overall it's not going to be worth it. And in this video, I'll talk about the proper times to roam as well, uh, because I do make a couple good roams in this game as well. But, uh, yes, itemizing towards the map and then warding up the map for your team, okay? Now, I'm not saying don't spend money on yourself in lane, you know, you can pamper yourself, you did well in lane, go ahead, you know, you can get yourself a spa kit if you want, but I choose not to. Uh, the utility that I bring to my team by placing wards everywhere uh, helps out my team a lot, and I think that's uh, very beneficial. So right here, um, I wanted to base, but it was an inopportune time to base. For those of you who don't know when to base, um, you have to push the minion wave up to turret. Now there are different types of pushes that you can be doing. Um, there are types of pushes like I'm doing right now that will build up my minion wave. Okay? Uh, so right now, uh, what you do to do that is look at the map, okay? So you can judge where the enemy minions are by your minions, right? So, if you shove out a lane, right? So, Nidalee's not here, I choose to shove this lane. If I shove this lane to her turret before the minions hit this point, um, before their minions hit this point, okay? Um, I counted, it does take about 10 to 12 seconds for the minion waves to get here. Um, if you guys don't believe me, let's go back uh, to seven minutes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and count it. But um, I do think it is about 10 to 12 seconds, so we're gonna see right now. Um, so we start at 7, 14. Okay, the minions are on the stopwatch. Let's see if they can make it. It's cutting it close. Okay, there you go, so 12 seconds. So, Assuming that each minion wave takes 12 seconds to get from here to here, you check the um, you check the attack speed on the turrets. They have 0.8 attack speed, meaning that they will be able to get off an auto attack every 0.8 seconds. So rounding that up to one second, only one auto every one second. Um, that means that 12 divided by one, you get 12 hits, right? Uh, melee minions take three hits. Caster minions take two hits. So, assuming that you have one melee minion, that's going to be three, and you have three caster minions, that's six, you'll have nine seconds. So that wave will reset. Say you have four, uh, two, cast, two melee minions, three caster minions. Uh, that's going to be six plus four, that's ten seconds, the wave will reset. So the only way your wave will not reset, if you push it before the minions hit here, and the minions are at her tower before it hits, the minions are here, if that makes sense, uh, is if you have a full minion wave. If you have a full minion wave, there'll be a slight delay in um, the push, but that's how you reset lanes, okay? So as an, as an enemy jungler, if you gank lane and you tell your laner that you're going to reset the lane, but the minions have already hit this point, don't bother. You're not going to reset it. You're just going to put your laner in an awkward position. However, I did not plan to reset the lane, so what I did was I ended up building the minion wave. Now, building the minion wave is different than, uh, than uh, resetting the minion wave. If you push the enemy minion wave up until... Um, if you push the enemy minion wave, like right now, uh, this will not reset, okay? 
because think about it, we have like five to six shots on the cannon minion, it's not going to reset. This will take out three ca three melee minions before these minions get there. Okay, so this is going to be building up the enemy minion wing for me. So what I did there was I pushed it to turret to deny CS, but I know that this is going to build the minion wave. It's not going to reset. So since it's not resetting the minion wave, I have time to go ahead and go clear some jungle camps. Right here, I'm going to come back in. Uh, I'm going to push this out a little bit more, try to deny a little bit more CS. And uh, let's see, right here, we're going to push it out. But these, I know I'm kind of straying from the whole carrying thing, but this is important information that a lot of people just simply don't know that you need to know. <laughs> like, it is important information. So right here, since I am pushing the wave and the wave will reset, I'm, I was trying to see if I can roam to the uh, Elise, but the Elise was definitely dead. So I did not have to do that. So I'm just keeping pressure here. Um, okay, so another thing that you need to know as far as carrying games are concerned is you need to know how to properly rotate as well. Um, Carrying a game from top lane is very difficult, like I said. Carrying from any lane is difficult just because of um, the fact that you can't leave your lane for too long or else you just start to um, not keep up with your enemy laner and you start to fall off a little bit. So you need to push effectively, okay? And by pushing effectively, you also need to know where the enemy jungler is. So taking a look at the map right now, if this person is a good jungler, he cannot gank bot or, or mid bot or mid. So his real only gank is top lane. So I know that if the enemy laner does not show, I know that she died, so I know she's probably coming back into the jungle right now. And uh, she's probably gonna have to be doing some of her camps. I do know that whatever buff she started at is going to be coming up in about 40 seconds. So assuming that it's a lease, I'm gonna try and think that it's a blue buff start. Um, and I made the wrong decision of not checking her buff. Um, well, I didn't check it now, but I checked it in game. So right here, I see her in the bot lane and it's like, it's really inefficient the way she's jungling right now. Like she's not applying any pressure to top lane. The top lane is just getting like shoved to hell. But, oh well, it is what it is. So if I picks up another kill on the Elise, Vi should be looking to steal her buff. Uh, whatever buff you start. Um, but knowing where the enemy jungler is and making educated guesses on when you can push and when you shouldn't push uh, are vital to uh, carrying a game from top lane or any other lane while still keeping uh, up in CS and still keeping up in main control as well. So I'm just laning right here. Uh, okay, I need to get away from this video. I first, I'm just so used to doing champion guides that by this time, like I really want to do a champion guide on Shivana, but this is a carry guide, so I need to get you guys advice on how to carry. Uh, so pushing out waves is definitely like the number one thing because it allows you to roam. So right here, um, when you want to leave lanes, okay. A lot of people don't know how to leave lane as well. A lot of people think like, oh, don't don't take my turret. I want more CS. I want uh, more lane. Like, sometimes you don't need it, okay? So for this instance right here, I pushed up my lane because I shoved it. I didn't shove it as well as I had hoped, but Yasuo was out of position, and that's something like I can't really ignore. Um, and I picked up the enemy jungler in bot lane. So right here. Yasuo is going to be trying to get away. Going to be chasing him down, giving him a little dragon love. Go ahead and turn on the burnout, and then I go back top. And you notice, because of how I push that minion wave, I don't lose any minions to the turret. Maybe one minion. But I was able to pick up a kill. So that's what I mean by pushing effectively and then roaming. See, had I let, had I just had that wave in the center of the lane, and I didn't push it, she would have definitely got like a lot of autos off of my turret. But since I pulled, since I pushed it right, and I pushed it to her turret and then roam, I was able to not miss any CS while still getting off my roams. So that's an example of effective uh, roaming. Right here, um, I know that the mini wave is pushed, but it's not going to reset. So the mini wave will in turn build up, and I will have time to go ahead and do some uh, jungle camps so that uh, I can farm safely. 
Because when you're when the minion wave is like right here, it's kind of awkward because you can't really see us because it's in the turret. So you're kind of spending like awkward time here where you're not gaining money, you're not you're not doing anything for yourself as a champion, as a player, as for gold. So that's why when the minion waves are starting to build up from that point, um, I go ahead and farm either their golems, my golems if I'm on top side, or their my wolves, my white, or their wolves, their white if I'm on. Uh, purple side. So, that's just something for you guys to note. Again, right here, push up the wave. Um, there's really nowhere I can go. So, just gonna be kind of breaking vision whenever I can. Uh, breaking vision is huge in this game. It allows you to create map pressure without necessarily leaving uh, your lane. Because if I... If with her restricted vision she sees me go into the river, but I back out of the river and come up through brushes, she's like, oh, missing, she went towards mid. That instantly tells my mid their mid laner, back off, because Shivana might be rotating down to you. And since I rotated down once, it's not out of the question that I'll rotate again. So you guys, like, break vision uh, using their vision to play mind games, because it's going to alleviate pressure for the rest of the map uh, for your team. So if Diana, let's say, was not as fed as she is, and I went, like, through there, and then came back out through... So right here, I should have gone down, or I could have gone down, come around, come through here, up through brushes, and then come up to this brush right here, um, if the minions weren't there. Like, if I was pushed to, like, right here, I could have done that. So right here, I know she had a base, so I'm gonna try and push out this wave, force out a TP, since I did force a TP, TP came in at a turret, that's 4 minutes, so he's going to be back up at 20 minutes. So I'm going to feel free to uh, get off some damage to her, or uh, have my enemy jungler gank this lane. She's just going to be opportune. Uh, best time to do it, because she can't TP. So you see I'm staying relatively ahead of her in CS. I'm going to go ahead and farm up the white camp, uh, just because the minion wave is going to be building towards me. So again, we be doing the same old, same old. Uh, okay, so when to take turrets and when not to take turrets when you're carrying a game. Uh, if you're an enemy laner adjacent to you or neighboring to you um, is winning, okay? So right now, Diana is winning her lane, right? Uh, she's not roaming very efficiently because Yasuo got her turret, but she is winning lane, you know? So since she is winning lane, I don't need to take this turret. Okay, so if I'm winning in lane, she's winning in lane, I don't take the turret, I proxy, okay? Um, the reason being is because I don't need to extend our vision into the jungle to help her win lane, or to help her out in a losing lane. So since I don't have to do that, um, I don't have to like take out this turret, roam, take out her turret, and then extend our vision lane. Um, if she was behind, I was ahead, I would take an early turret, uh, work on uh, shoving to the sweep point, and if you guys don't know the sweep point, the sweep point is one minion wave past here, so usually these minions will collide right around here, and then push that minion wave out. Uh, push that minion wave out until uh, you farm that whole wave, and then you just go ahead and roam uh, different places. So right there I got caught in the act of proxying, and that's no good, but we're going to make her pay for that, we're going to take her race. Uh, so right here, just popping down the race, seeing if I can uh, pick up some extra gold, wherever I can. But I do need to get back to top lane uh, soon, because she's going to be pushing into my turret. Uh, my minions will hopefully get there in time, uh, if not I will have to miss a couple minions, but I was able to pick up race as well. So making your making your moves efficient gold wise is always pretty important, uh, just because like if I got shoved out right there, right, like I made a mistake in my calculation of where the enemy jungler was. Um, if I had let that deter me from just like going, oh well, I'm screwed, and then just going back in the lane, I would have wasted all of that walking time. But instead, since I got her rates, I was able to pick up some gold for my roaming. Um, but back on topic, so if she is behind. Yeah, heard a door close. No one's home. Kind of spooky. <laughs> so if she's behind, I'm ahead. I'm going to take that turret early so I can push to the sweep point and then roam. 
And once I start roaming after I push to the sweet point, if no one is actively forcing that lane to push, then I will have uh, I will have about two minutes to roam around and do my thing, and then get back into top lane. So right here, uh, does she have a minion wave there? Yeah, she does have a minion wave. But since I have TP, uh, I'm able to TP back top and not lose any uh, minions worth of EXP uh, or gold. But I was able to pick up a kill in mid lane. So you can see that's like the effectiveness of roaming at the proper time. So again, I'm no, I'm in no hurry to take this turret. If I were this Nidalee, I would be pressuring to take down this uh, turret early. So in the instance where I'm losing and my enemy mid laner is winning, um, I'm going to want to end lane in phase as much as possible and group up the team. Okay. Now the reason is because. If Nidalee is ahead of me in lane, Nidalee is dominating me as a lane. I can't do anything against her. She is only gaining more and more power as I stay in lane and get weaker and weaker and weaker progressively uh, in relevance towards her. So if I can end her laning phase early and start team fighting and forcing her to come team fight with everyone else, we stand a better chance. Because think about it, if mid lane is fed, their mid lane is severely starved, but I went relatively neutral to a little bit below. We're gonna win that trade. So by ending laning phase early, I'm able to basically say, yo, I know you did better than me in lane, but my team did better than your team. So we're just gonna group up and see if we can start fighting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proxy. I want the mini wave to get denied as much as possible. Uh, and the reason being, uh, if I can deny as much CS to my enemy laner as possible, um, then that's going to keep her behind. Uh, another thing guys, don't do what that Tristana did in Flash. I mean, like, I was kind of worth the gold. Um, I was kind of worth the Flash because I am 2-0, and I think I end up this game 7-0. But um, try not to Flash for kills unless it means something. Um, like, that was just... To get a kill for her, uh, she's already four and three. She didn't really need a flash, especially as an ADC who has like a Vi, a Shivana, uh, Diana. You kind of need flash as an ADC. So try not to burn your summoners. Uh, try and keep them up as much as possible. Like that's always like number one tip for from me to everyone else is always try and keep your uh, summoners on cool or off of cooldown. So like I only use flash when I need to use flash. I typically don't try and use flash for kills uh, unless it's in the early game. Like I'd say from 0 to 20 minutes it's probably okay for you to flash for kills. But after the 20 minute point try not to flash unless it means getting an objective or uh, getting a, getting something out of it. You know because like if you just push or if you just flash needlessly for kills then you're not going to have your summoners for when it counts. Because like if that Tristana flash and we start Baron fight right now, and she has no flash, and she gets caught out, and I have a flash, or Diana has a flash. She's gonna get screwed, because Rocket Jump's not gonna be able to do much, because she doesn't have a flash. So, that's just a little word for the wise, so. All right, well now that you guys know how to get turrets effectively, um, as far as um, when to push, when not to push, when to take turret, when not to take turret. Now you guys need to know how to extend your vision lines. Okay, so once you're ahead, you need to extend out your vision line and choke out the enemy jungler in the spot that you gained vision of. So you see right here, we took two we took two turrets in mid, so our vision line is that right now. So right now, mid and, mid and bot and jungle you need to coordinate warding up here and top lane needs to coordinate warding up here. Now since we're not we're not very behind right now so I can't really say like I'm carrying. Like I am keeping lane shoved and I'm keeping map pressure so that in a sense is carrying for this game. But um, in general if I was in that Jace game I was warding up the enemy jungle uh, to utilize our vision line. Because since we have all this turret area, this is all areas that we can gank the enemy laners, you know, if they try and farm and CS. We can also take jungle camps, starving the enemy jungler of uh, gold. Just vision wins games. Like, I know a lot of people say like, oh, in lower elos no one buys wards and you should buy wards. 
but everyone's like, oh, I don't know, like, rewards are a waste of money, I could be buying damage items with that money. Well, it's like, I don't know, I, <laughs> I feel like buying rewards are so important now. Like, once I have, uh, once I have, uh, started buying rewards, you can't stop buying rewards. But, anyways, that's a little, uh, nitty gritty thing, uh, just pushing up your, or your, uh, your vision line, because if you don't push up your vision line, what's going to end up happening is you're not going to utilize the areas that you gained uh, with turrets, uh, turrets getting taken down. So if you don't utilize that vision, you're just standing in areas where the enemies could gank you at any point uh, because you have no vision. So getting turrets but not putting out wards is worse than, uh, than getting the turrets at all. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to ward. You have to get effective wards. See, like, this ward right here doesn't mean shit. Like, that's nothing. You know, jungler could come around through here. Jungler could come through here. Uh, can't really come through there, so I guess it blocks one path. Um, this ward is an effective ward. This ward covers this path, uh, covers this path, covers this path, covers this path. Effective ward. Uh, this ward right here would be effective. Uh, if this ward were ours, it'd be somewhat effective for buff control, but it wouldn't be very effective for map control. So like right here, right here, um, right here is a good ward as well as right here. Uh, this bush is very tricky. Um, you can either get right here to grant vision of all of this, or you can grant vision right here to grant you vision of all of this. If you put it kind of in the middle, you don't really get too much of this, but you get a lot of that. So. Depending on where you ward, that ward is very efficient. Um, again, warding right there is good. This ward, it's good in the early game. I don't... I mean, it's a good warding spot. I just think that it only covers like roughly about two paths. I mean, it covers four paths technically, but a two-path one. So, I don't know. It's up to you if you like that ward spot or not. Um, I Whatever. You gotta keep with the guides. You gotta push through. But, um, so those are good warding spots. So, we've covered how to roam, how to push, how to sh uh, reset, and how to uh, pile waves, how to CS. Uh, we've covered when to take turrets, when not to take turrets. We've covered how to um, utilize your turrets that you've taken. So, what else is there to carry that I can tell you guys? Um, high farm. High farm is definitely always important. Uh, you see, at 27 minutes, I have 229 farm while also participating in three kills and getting rewards out and just kind of roaming in general. My farm definitely could be higher, but um, I'm I am wasting a little bit of time here and there, uh, just not doing anything right there. I could have farmed the minion wave, been around for some exp, uh, and my route to bot or my route to top would not have been any different. But oh well. So you see, I went ahead and built. Um, I went ahead and built for dueling. Okay, so you have to keep in mind what kind of carry you are. You have to keep in mind: Are you a damage carry that is going to be helping your team through poke damage? Uh, Jace is a very damage-oriented carry. Um, another damage-oriented carry would say be a. I'm talking about top lane, by the way. Um, Probably be Jax. Jax is another damage oriented carry. Uh, he's damage slash duel. Um, Shivana is a dueling carry. Uh, Shivana is meant to split push, which is kind of like a Trendomir. Uh, so, how Shivanas typically carry games is they just split push and they create map pressure for the, your team to do well. The only problem with that is if your team can't wave clear, then uh, a split push carry kind of suffers. Uh, but Shivana is a duelist split push carry, basically. So you need to keep that in mind and itemize accordingly. I went ahead and picked up a Blade of the Ruin King, as well as a Last Whisperer, so that I can gain any armor that anyone else is building on me. So that we can, um, so that I have the potential to duel. I mean, Shivana, or, um, uh, what's there? No one's really building any armor, but Last Whisperer always is nice when you're very, very ahead uh, to just build and gain damage through your vision. But since Shivana is a 
split push champion, I need to be able to wave clear, I need to be able to duel. So two items that help me out with that are Sunfire Cape and a Blade of the Ruin King. So you see I am going to be picking up my Sunfire Cape fairly soon, and I am itemizing towards carrying the way I need to carry. If I were Jace, I'd probably be picking up a Infinity Edge, I'd probably pick up a... Uh, if my team was tanky, I'd probably pick up a Yomu's Ghost Blade. If my team was not tanky, I'd probably pick up the Brutalizer, or uh, Black Cleaver off of the Brutalizer chain. Um, I like I like the uh, Yomu's on Jace just because of the move speed that you get. Uh, it can help you chase down. The attack speed and the crit chance that you get off of it are really good for uh, dueling in your uh, gun form and also uh, taking down turrets very, very, very quickly. Um, some people will disagree with me, but I like building Yomu's on Jace just because I feel like the stats that he gets from it uh, help him carry in certain scenarios. Um, I'd probably get like a Bloodthirster, uh, GA, um, Lucidity Boots. If I'm, if I'm in a position to carry, I'm in a position to wear Lucidities. So if you're behind, don't wear Lucidity though, because that's going to just ruin you. Uh, so right here, I could not push the wave out to the speed point, but Velkos went ahead and did that for me, so I'm going to go ahead and gank bot with a TP to turret, so that I can make sure that we pick up this kill. And because that top lane is pushed, I have no more reason to be there. Uh, I will have created all the map pressure top that I needed to. You see Nidalee and Elise are in top side, so I've done my job, and they have rotated to top in response to me. So I'm going to be shoving out bot, and typically laners that are in that lane respond to the pushes. So if top was pushing, Nidalee will respond. If bot is pushing, typically Tristana or Morgana would respond to that. Just typically how it goes. I'm not saying that's how it's always gonna go. I'm not saying that's set in stone, but it is a good indicator of how that ends up working. So right here, push to the sweet spot, break vision of, uh, break vision so that I create map pressure. They don't know where I'm at right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ward up right there. Again, very efficient ward. I get to see four pads. And if anyone's coming towards me, I'll be able to see them and get away because of that ward. So right here, I'm going to push out the lane. I see that Yasuo is there. Keep in mind that when you are playing a split push carry, typically you're going to be a higher level than everyone else. So you don't have to be that afraid to duel. Um, in instances like this where uh, the enemy team is quite... Uh, quite adept at catching me out. I do need to be a little bit careful, but um, I was feeling confident to go in because, you know, Ethan on ADC always makes me feel a little bit more confident. Plus also he was in the area, so I knew that I had the opportunity to go ahead and do that. Um, right here, I know that Nidalee walked back, and I know that Trist and Elise are in top half jungle, so I feel fine taking this turret um, with Ethan. So we're going to go ahead and try and push this uh, in here, but we're not going to be able to get it because we see Tristana coming over. And she does end up jumping over the wall to try and get a kill, and I barely am able to survive. I do have a little bit of move speed right there. That was such a wasted flash by Tristana, and I believe she ends up paying the price here. Uh, this I, I remember this. This is a very extended chase. But yeah, that was an example of a very kiss poor flash. But anyways, you see I'm doing my job right now. I have top pushing towards them. I have bot pushing towards them. So right now, we should be grouping mid and fighting. Um, I do need a base because I am low, but everyone else can be grouping mid. By grouping mid, this creates a lot of map pressure because they want to respond to top and bot, but they can't because it's pushing. Like there's four people mid or three people mid. You can't not respond to them. Like they're gonna pick up turrets way quicker than any minion wave. So, um, instead of basing, what I do is I end up uh, relying on the passive lifesteal off of Blade of the Ruin King to get me a little bit sustained up. And I'm going to shove that wave out, create more map pressure, because the threat of losing an inhib is going to suck for this team. So, I should have based earlier here. I should not have ran all this way. I, there's no point in running all this way. I mean, I did lose vision, but again, I need to go like run. All that way, it's a waste of time as far as like a, uh, a split pushing would need to be. So right there, I do end up picking up my Sunfire Cape. But, um, so we've covered everything up until the point of what type of carry you are. That's an important thing. So once you 
establish what type of carry you are, communicate to your team what kind of carry you are. Uh, if you're an assassin carry, uh, assassinate. If you're a split push carry, split push. Uh, right here, I see everyone's fighting in mid, so I'm going to go ahead and keep up my pressure in bot lane because uh, Vi is killing at least top. No reason to be top. Um, because we have, I have an open in here that I can bang on with bot lane, and that will definitely draw a lot of aggro to me. So, that's uh, just knowing the type of champion I am, knowing how to split push effectively. So right now I'm level 18 compared to everyone else who is level 14, 14, 15, 16, 14. And everyone else on my team, the next closest person is Ethan at level 17 and Diana at level 17. But um, you can see they're not keeping up in farm. Uh, well, Ethan's keeping up in farm, Diana's not. Diana is, uh, Diana's kind of being your typical... Uh, Solo Q, low elo, carry, like, oh, I'm getting a lot of kills, FCS. I mean, she has good CS, it's like pretty decent, but the enemy SUO who does not have as many kills as her will end up making up for it a little bit by the amount of CS that he has over her. Um, so that's just something to know. So guys, uh, this video will end up wrapping up fairly soon. Uh, I do believe the surrender comes down. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay as well. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about carrying. Um, if I wasn't as clear on what carrying is, um, see, look at this, just lol replay. Um, but yeah, we ended up picking up the victory here. They ended up surrendering at 36 minutes, or 36:30, I think it was. But hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a thing or two about carrying. If you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comment section down below. I will be responding to every single comment that you guys post. So. Again, guys, have a fantastic day. I really hope that you guys enjoy your day today and um, that you do end up having a fantastic weekend as well. We have a three-day weekend coming up, so I hope you, you guys can enjoy that as well. All right, guys, without anything else to say, this has been your LOL support, and I am out of here.